applying backgrounds to content adds depth to your page. You can jazz up the background of an element using a specific color, add an image, or apply a gradient. Today, let's take a deep dive into how to configure backgrounds in different layouts. We will also discuss how to use background colors and images, as well as all the advanced options. We will also touch on using gradients and overlays and how you can use them to increase legibility by increasing the contrast. Let's get started. When a background is applied to an element, it will fill the entire space of the parent container. The background property is located on the Styles pane, under the Design section, and the Background. Solid background colors may be selected by clicking on the background color box. In addition to simple solid backgrounds, beautiful full-size background images may be applied. Then there's the ability to use multiple backgrounds. Combining images with overlaying semi-transparent gradients, for example, can really add stunning effects. The order these backgrounds are applied is important for the desired effect. Generally speaking, a gradient will need to be on top of an image, a small image on top of a larger image. To reorder the background layering, grab the arrow icon and drag it up or down to a different position. Let's look at the gradient settings first. A gradient is a progressive transition between two or more colors. A linear gradient follows a line on which the colors fade from one color into the next. A radial gradient starts at the center and changes colors going towards the outside of the circle. For a linear gradient, the angle can be changed by specifying a specific degree. For example, changing the value from 180 to 90 would make the gradient run from left to right instead of top to bottom. Any value in between is possible as well. A gradient can consist of up to four colors. A color may be added into the mix by clicking on the checkbox. The stop control defines where the color starts. Linear and radial gradients work in a very similar way, except for the degree control is not available for radials. Let's talk about background images next. Images may be added to the project locally or linked in from an online source. The resource drop-down control is where you will configure the image resource. When choosing a local image from the drop-down, the resources dialog pop-up window will appear, allowing you to import the graphic from your computer. To change the graphic to an online image, select URL from the drop-down. Then paste the full web link to the image location in the box that appears below. Once your resource is in place, if you change your mind and need to swap it out for another image, simply click the pencil icon to edit the graphic selection. Images can also be changed at breakpoints. This way, smaller and lighter file size images may be served to smaller devices. This is handy if you want to show a cropped version too for smaller screens. The position control may be used to move the image. The default values are left and top. Custom values may be used as well. The attachment control specifies if the image position is fixed within the viewport or can scroll along within its containing block. The fixed control works well for large background images on a container. Please note that mobile devices offer limited support for fixed backgrounds, as it is resource intensive and negatively impacts battery life. Let's take a look at some examples. This container has a background with a fixed image. Notice how the background is fixed relative to the viewport. It's kind of like a window, so when scrolling, it changes your perspective. In this other case, the background image is positioned using scroll. You're able to view the image completely, and when you scroll, you'll always see the same view. 
The repeat control may be used to create full background patterns. This is done using small images to create the pattern. A tiny thumbnail is instructed to repeat along both the X and Y axis. Alternatively, the image may be only repeated along the X or Y axis, or not at all. The size control offers many options for specifying the size of the background image. The default is auto, which tells the browser to calculate the size based on the actual size of the image and its aspect ratio. This is frequently used for full background sections. The cover tells the browser to make the image cover the entire container. Even if the images need to be stretched or cut off a bit, such as the edges. The contain setting, on the other hand, gives the instruction to always show the whole image, even if that leaves a little space to the sides or the bottom. A custom size may be specified for the width, height, or both. By unchecking either or both auto boxes, a value may be specified. Please note that this can easily influence the aspect ratio and cause distortions in the image, so use with care. The origin control is less frequently used setting. It defines where the top left corner of the background starts. Starting with the outside part of the element, the background extends to the edge of the border using the border box value. The padding box setting makes the background start at the border underneath the padding using padding box. When using content box, the background is restricted underneath the content area. Lastly, the clip control works in a similar way, except it clips the background instead of resizing it. As with the origin control, it is a less frequently used setting. There's a lot to consider with your designs when using the background property. Set background colors, add images, or even add linear gradients to enhance your content.